It's the Two Point Conversion Podcast. Hello, everybody. With your host, TFA. Only on the MBL Network. Network, network, network. Hey, MBL. Welcome to a special edition of TFA's Two Point Conversion. I'm your host, TFA. This week on the Two Point Conversion Podcast, we're going to focus on giving out our off-season grades. That's the only focus this week. So we're going to jump right into it. We're going to start this week with the AFC East. The first team we're going to go with, we're going to start off at the top, the New England Patriots. For me, they receive an off-season grade of a B-. minus. The Patriots added a lot of depth in free agency. However, I don't see where those players are going to fit in this year. The draft definitely filled a huge need at wide receiver, but I think this team really needed some offensive linemen, and they didn't seem to get any. They did walk away with two star progression draft picks as well as a fast progression pick. So, decent offseason, B- minus for the New England Patriots. Next, the Buffalo Bills. The Buffalo Bills get an offseason grade of a C-. minus. The team needs help in the secondary, and nothing was done this offseason to add to that. I think they addressed a need on the offensive line. However, they still have a lot of needs and help on the right side of the offensive line. They drafted two star progression right ends, so I'm really confused as to what their plan is with them. They have two guys at the same position that can both kind of do the same thing, so we'll see what happens with those two right ends if they kind of stick them on opposite sides or what's going to happen. They also got stuck with two slow progression draft picks, which is kind of a bummer. Um, You know, the Bills need a lot of help this year in order to compete for the division title. The Miami Dolphins receive an offensive grade of a D+. This was uh, Juggernaut's first offseason with us. Um, But they signed Colin Kaepernick, who has been been passed around really more than a joint in Denver. So, you know, we'll see what happens with him, if he's going to be their starting quarterback this year, or uh, if they're going to continue with Tannehill. They also drafted the biggest question mark of the draft in cornerback Will Slaughter. Seems to have paid off. You know, the hype definitely seemed to be worth it, but we'll see if his play on the field can kind of pay off and if they can get as good a production as they hope out of him. I think that this team still needs wide receivers and cornerbacks. Um, Outside of Slaughter, they're really going to need a lot of help. The New York Jets. You guys got a failing grade this year. I give the New York Jets an offseason grade of an F. This team needed a lot of help going into the offseason, and they might have had the worst draft in the entire league. I mean, they really struck out on a lot of their picks. They had seven draft picks. They only got center Neil Cook, who he's the only bright spot of this entire offseason for the New York Jets, who really didn't add any help in free agency. Um, I think that this team has a lot of needs, and, and I really think they need to focus next season on filling those needs, and we'll see... You know, if this team's really in in shambles like it looks they are, or if they're able to pull out with, you know, the few guys that they have on the roster, and if they're they're able to make a push this season. Heading over to the AFC North, the Pittsburgh Steelers. They get an offseason grade of a B. Lip had a good offseason. They didn't have a whole lot of needs coming into the offseason, you know, but they got a replacement for Big Ben and Lucky Jordan. Um, He's a star, probably, you know, going to be one of the better quarterbacks coming out of this draft. Um, He's already being called the White Michael Vick, so we'll see how that hype pays off. Um, It's going to be interesting to see the potential of this kid, and and I'm going to be really interested to see what they do having him sitting behind Ben, you know, if he's going to get the start this year or if they're going to still hand the ball to Ben. Um... Outside of this, I think the Steelers had a really quiet offseason, but they didn't lose a whole lot, so that's why the uh, the Pittsburgh Steelers get a B. The Cincinnati Bengals, for me, they get an offseason grade of a C. Um, I think Sonny had a great season last year. I think his roster is still pretty good this season. But outside of strong safety Austin Porter, I think they had a pretty weak draft. Um, you know, I don't really think they got a whole lot outside of that pick. They had a really good free agency when it came to acquiring wide receivers. They got Chris Matthews and Brian Quick, um, you know, but they really overpaid on cornerback Alteron Werner, so we're going to see if that comes back to bite them later on. This is definitely a defense that needs some improvement, and I really don't think that they got the pieces this offseason to improve that defense. The Cleveland Browns. Now, I know I'm going to get some shit for this, but I'm giving myself an offseason grade of a B+. Um, I didn't do a whole lot in free agency. I sent a couple of uh, smaller pieces, a couple of depth guys. Um, I sent veteran cornerback William Gay. But outside of that, I didn't do a whole lot. I had a really, really good draft, though. 
Um, I got four immediate starters out of the draft. Three of them were in the top 17 in true talent, and they were all at positions of the needs. You know, so I got a right outside linebacker, a defensive tackle, a center, and a free safety, and they're all going to come in this season and start right away. The Baltimore Ravens get an offseason grade of a C- minus this year. I think Pricey did some good things. Um, you know, I think they finished off as, as one of the bottom teams in the league last season. And uh, I, I think they dis- them kind of laying an egg in free agency. They signed quarterback Ryan Nassib to replace Joe Flacco. So we'll see how that goes if he's going to come in and be the starter. Um, I do think they had a pretty good draft. They they drafted a few guys. Antoine Keith at left outside linebacker I really like that can come in and, and start right away. So I think they still have a lot of needs, but I think this is definitely a team that's uh, that's looking up and, and improving. Heading over to the AFC South, Tennessee Titans get an offseason grade of a B plus. So N Train receives a B plus offseason grade. I think that they had a really, really good offseason. They did a lot in free agency. They signed uh, cornerback Byron Maxwell, cornerback Alfonso Denard, and they signed center Alex Mack. So they did a lot in the secondary. Um, defense was definitely a focus this this offseason as they drafted uh, a right outside linebacker and a free safety. So they had a pretty good draft, um, you know, at the top, but outside of those top two guys, you know, the other guys kind of fell off, so they don't really have much depth in the draft. But overall, a relatively good season, and I expect the, uh, the Titans to compete again in the AFC. The Houston Texans, one of the surprise teams from last year, they get an offseason grade of a B. I think Cuba did a great job this offseason. Um, they came on strong last year, winning the most improved award, and they really followed it up. They made a lot of improvements this offseason on defense. They went out and they signed uh, Sean Witherspoon in free agency, Mario Williams, Dominique Rogers cromartie And then uh, in the draft, they took a defensive tackle first. He's a star. You know, he's he's definitely going to be one of the better players on this defense. And I think that they added a lot of help on offensive line in the draft, too. They got a center and a left guard in the draft, and I think both those guys are going to be able to come in and, and help them compete for a division crown. The Indianapolis Colts, Homer Hankey's getting an offseason grade of a B-. minus. Uh, the you know they had a good off season in both free agency and the draft. However, I think they created their own uh, their own little controversy there in Indianapolis by drafting a halfback. They've already got a halfback on the roster, so I'm not quite sure what they were doing. Um, if this was just kind of a best player available situation, and they're going to rock two halfbacks, or you know, so it's going to be interesting to see who gets the nod and and if this controversy is going to hurt the team in the long run. The Jacksonville Jaguars. I gave them an offseason grade of a D plus. Uh, I think they had a pretty poor offseason. I definitely think they had the most picks in the draft at eleven. Um, you know, so eleven picks in the draft, and they struck out on a lot of them. They didn't really sign anybody in free agency. Um, you know, they got a few guys at the top of the draft. Wide receiver Will Buchanan, I really like. Uh, tight end Emmanuel Beedy too. So I like those two guys, but outside of those two. Um, you know, they had a good chance to re-sign a lot of guys or, or draft a lot of guys to help this team. And I think with 11 picks, you know, it was kind of a waste. I think they're going to they're gonna be kicking themselves this season. I have a new team name for them, too. You know, I'm going to call them the Jacksonville Kittens because I don't think this team's going to scare anybody this season. The AFC West. The San Diego Chargers receive an offseason grade of a C- minus for me. Um, I was going to go lower on this grade, but they did sign uh, K.J. Wright and Lawrence Timmons, so they definitely beefed up their linebacking core this season, offseason. Um, but other than that, they didn't add hardly anything in the draft. They had a really, really bad draft. But, you know, they set their focus on those two guys, hoping that everybody that comes back can contribute and, and they can make another push to the Super Bowl. So we'll see if, if adding these few guys pays off or if they're going to have a, a little bit of a rough season. The Denver Broncos. They're receiving my second F of the year uh, for an offseason grade. I think Backley, I'm not quite sure what he was doing this offseason. They have uh, you know, some talent on the roster, but they didn't improve the offensive line, which definitely needs improvement. I think this is going to come back to hurt the rookie of the year quarterback, Cole Parker. Um, I think he's going to have a sophomore slump this year. I really think that this just was an all-around really bad offseason. Their draft was really bad. They didn't really sign any great free agents. Uh, they got wide receivers to find digs, but I mean, you know, it, it's going to be hard to tell if he's going to be able to come in and actually contribute to the way that, that uh, Beckley paid him to come in and contribute. So it'll be interesting to see. Then we got another F for Kansas City Chiefs. Uh, the Kansas City Chiefs get a grade of an F, so my third F given out this year. Um, 
you know, the Kansas City Chiefs continue the trend in this division. They're getting another grade of an F. Uh, that's two for the AFC West. I'm really not quite sure what this division was thinking. They're one of the best divisions in the league, yet two of the top teams decide to go out, really laid an egg this offseason. Um, everybody competed last year, yet no one wanted to really get the upper hand this year. So it's going to be interesting to see how that plays out. This team really has a lot of needs all over the roster. So I'm really not quite sure where they're uh, headed in this, this next season and what their plan is to kind of make their team better. The Oakland Raiders. They actually get my highest offseason grade for the AFC at an A-. I think Project Fat did a great job this offseason. He had 10 picks, which was the second most next to JY with 11. Um, he really, really did a good job in the draft. He definitely wasn't any Al Davis this year. Um, you know, he went out... He focused on signing players that were going to make his team better at positions that he needed, other than just drafting a wide receiver or a cornerback or a quarterback at skill positions, you know, typical, typical project fat uh, offseason. But he went out, he sent a really, or he drafted a really good right tackle in Jamin Young. I'm interested to see how he plays out. He's going to definitely help that offensive line a lot. Um, he got a right outside linebacker in Hunter Spence, who's really, really good. He's going to come in. He's going to make an immediate impact. I think he has a chance to be one of the leading tackle getters on this defense. Um, and wide receiver C.J. Thornton, I think he was a great addition. I think he's going to help the receiving core, and he's going to be able to play alongside Amari Cooper. The NFC East, we're going to head over to the NFC now, start with the NFC East. The NFC East starts off with the New York Giants getting an offseason grade of a B. So I'm giving Tom in the New York Giants an offseason grade of a B. They had nine draft picks. I don't think they really did a whole lot in the draft. They added some offensive line help. But after that, they didn't really do a whole lot. I gave them a B, though, because I think that they added DeMarco Murray in free agency. Um, they went out. They got the top running back in free agency. I think the rushing game is going to improve greatly. And I think this was a main focus for the Giants as they did go out. They drafted offensive line. They added a lot of depth guys, too, in free agency. Um, you know, and it's, it's going to be interesting to see if those depth guys can come in when some of their starters get tired and make some plays and help this team uh, get a little bit further than the wild card round in the playoffs this year. Next up for the NFC East, we have the Washington Redskins getting an offseason grade of a C+. Uh, Doughboy had a really good season last year. I think he impressed a lot of people. They didn't make any big signings in free agency, and they only had five picks in the draft, but they did snag a gem. Uh, Fifth-round pick defensive tackle Brenton Taylor. He's star progression. They got him in the fifth round. Um, I would have definitely liked this to see this team be a little bit more active in free agency. Um, and I think they still have some holes at wide receiver and safety that need to be filled, but we'll see how these guys can come in and, and kind of contribute. Dallas Cowboys are going to get an offseason grade of a B-. I think McGiblets did a really, really good job this year. Uh, he moved up. They, uh, they moved up to get the fourth pick in the draft, used it on wide receiver Otho Rosemond. I think he's going to be a big help. He's thinking that he can come in and, and kind of be a, a mini Des Bryant there. So hopefully helping in the passing game and uh, helping with development there. I definitely think they had a, a need at quarterback, and I definitely think they could have addressed that, but there wasn't a whole lot this offseason to address that with, so I think they took the the right route um, by sticking away and kind of you know, giving their quarterbacks some, some, more, uh, some more firepower on offense and some more people to throw to. The Philadelphia Eagles get an offseason grade of a B-. October and the Eagles get a B-. Um, they weren't very active this offseason. They did manage to trade up to get one of the top corners in the draft in John Clay. Um, they did miss out on, on the other two corners. So I think out of the top three corners in the draft, Clay's probably the worst of the three, um, but he's still a very good player. He's going to come in and contribute right away, and he's definitely going to step right into the number one cornerback uh, spot on this team. I definitely think there's there's a lot more of a need it, it, in the secondary here, um, but I think they're heading in the right direction. NFC North now, we're going to head over. Bomber and the Detroit Lions are going to receive an offseason grade of a C. Now, I don't think this team really had any needs going into the offseason. This team would have been one of the top teams um, week in and week out. They did go ahead. They added a lot of depth in free agency. They added uh, Charles Johnson at left end, cornerback Will Davis. I think those guys are going to, going to play really big roles for this team. They didn't have very many picks. They only had five picks in the draft. Um, they had a really bad draft, one of the worst drafts I've seen. But I don't really see any decrease in production this season. I think they're they're going to be still right at the top of the league. So I think they kind of had a so-so offseason right there with a C. 
The Minnesota Vikings, just a little bit worse. They're going to get an offseason grade of a C-. minus. Um, APV competed last year, made the playoffs. Uh, he lost a bomber in the divisional round, but he did end up winning a game in the playoffs. So congratulations to APV on a playoff win last year. I think that this team needed to do a little bit more. Um, they have a lot of work that needs to be done in their offensive line and their defensive line. They did snag a really, really good defensive tackle in the draft. His name's Antoine Tracy. But outside of that, I don't think they took that next step that they really needed to take. They were quiet in free agency, and outside of the defensive tackle, they had a relatively rough draft. So we'll see if this one addition is enough to push them over the hump and compete for the division crown. The Green Bay Packers. Now, I'm giving the Green Bay Packers an offseason grade of a C+, but I'm throwing an asterisk next to it uh, because we have a new owner in the league, Unisolated, is taking over the Green Bay Packers. So welcome to the league, Unisolated. Um, old ownership went 13 and th- or 3 and 13 last year, sorry. Um, and this team is, is really in shambles going into the offseason. Um, new ownership took over after the free agency period, so no, uh, no big signings to talk about there. And uh, he wasn't able to make the draft. So this is really just a, a kind of an off-season, a CPU off-season grade. Um, I do think that they did add a couple good guys on defense. Strong safety Adrian Grayson and uh, right end Audrey Barnes both came out of the draft this year. So we'll be interested. To, I'll be interested to see if um, these young guys can come out of the draft and, and actually produce for this team. Chicago Bears. They're actually going to get one of my best off-season grades. The Chicago Bears and Bob, you guys are getting an off-season grade of an A. Um, so that's my highest grade so far to this point. Project Fat had an A-, minus, but now the Chicago Bears beat him out for an A. Um, I thought you know, they had a great off-season. I loved how they handled everything. I really would have liked to see them trade back in the draft. They had the number one pick. I think they could have gotten a lot of players instead of just getting one player. But they saw a need at the the top of the draft, and they went ahead and they stuck to their board, and I, I respect that. Uh, they drafted cornerback Jalen Wilson, um, probably the fastest cornerback that we've ever seen come out of a draft. He's coming right away at 99 uh, speed, so that's going to be exciting to see how fast he truly is on the field. Him alongside uh, Greco, who they drafted last year, is going to be a really deadly combination at cornerback position for the Bears. So I'm interested to see if this defense is going to get a lot better this year and if the secondary can you know, really step up and help this team win some games. The team still had a major need at offensive line heading into the offseason. They signed two veterans in Joe Thomas and John Asamoah, so I think those were great signings. They also drafted a right tackle, Zach Moss, who can come in right away and start. So I think they're putting themselves in a really good position heading forward, um, and I think that they're going to be able to win a few more games this year and get out of those, you know, the, the bottom of the league. The NFC South. We're going to start off with the Atlanta Falcons. I'm going to give them an A as well. So we have our second A given out. The Atlanta Falcons are getting an A. Um, it's really hard to imagine a team that's coming off of a Super Bowl win having one of the best off seasons and really improving their team. But that's exactly what this Falcons team did. They didn't have a pick until the last pick of the second round, yet they managed to draft an immediate replacement for uh, Matt Ryan and quarterback Joey Bell. They grabbed two star progression players and a fast progression player in the draft. And they really added an elite pass rusher in Tom Holly in free agency. I think that this team is definitely ready to make a push and repeat as Super Bowl champions. The Carolina Panthers, this is the flip side of the uh, the NFC South. These two teams have been at the top of the division. The Panthers and the Falcons have been for the past uh, four seasons. And I think that the Carolina Panthers went the opposite direction. You guys are going to get an offseason grade of a D+. Plus. Um, I think Wildcats really needed to do a little bit more this offseason. They traded up to acquire a second first-round pick this season. Um, and with those two first-round picks, I think they reached on both of them. They didn't have a very good um, very good offseason at all. They signed uh, Eric Decker in free agency, and they drafted tight end Julian Sims. But uh, behind Sims, I don't think they really had a good pick in this, uh, in this draft. I think they kind of struggled a little bit and got a few busts, so... It'll be interesting to see if they had enough talent on the roster to continue their run or if this week offseason is going to hurt them. Um, you know, I'm confused as to why this team continues to add wide receivers. Um, you know, it's it's a focus each and every offseason, but they seem to have so many wide receivers on the roster already that I'm not quite sure what this team's doing. The New Orleans Saints get an offseason grade of an A+. Um, Frylock, congratulations on an A-plus offseason grade. Um, obviously, this is the highest grade I can hand out. Um, it's one of my top grades this offseason. They came out firing. They made a huge splash in the offseason. 
Um, they signed free agents Akib Tlaib and Captain Munderland. That's going to really help the defense. They also signed middle linebacker Brandon Spikes. That was a late addition to uh, free agency, and they went out and they snagged him. So good job there. They're definitely going to improve on defenses. I think it's going to be one of the most improved defenses in the league. Um, you know, New Orleans has kind of been the place where all old players decide to take the retirement tour. Uh, but I think they have enough young talent mixed in with the veteran leadership that, that this team has a, a chance to make a big jump this year. The Tampa Bay Buccaneers are going to also receive an offseason grade of an A+. So congratulations to CMF and the Tampa Bay Bucks. The only two A-plus grades that I gave out all offseason went to the Saints and the Buccaneers, who were two of the bottom teams in the league. Both of these teams did a great job in the draft, did a great job in free agency, and I really I struggled to find a team that had a better draft than the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Um, they went ahead, they traded back, so instead of getting just one piece, they got a few. Um, they did a great job as they went defense heavy in the draft. Um, if you're wondering where all of the good linebackers went in the draft, take a look at the Bucks roster because they have just about every good linebacker that the draft had to offer. Um, they went ahead, they signed uh, two middle linebackers, they signed a left outside linebacker and a right outside linebacker, and I think all of these guys have a real big chance of becoming stars in this league. I think that this has a chance to be the most improved defense in NBL this upcoming season. Um, and if these guys can get a little roll behind them, I think all of these rookies right there in the middle of the defense, um, you know, going forward, I think they're going to be a force to be reckoned with. Our final division is going to be the NFC West. Uh, we're going to start off with the Seattle Seahawks. I'm going to give the Seattle Seahawks an offseason grade of a B plus. I think Basson did a good job improving this team this offseason. Um, he signed a lot of veterans in free agency. And they did manage to snag the top player in true talent in the draft in right outside linebacker Darius Pruitt. I think he's going to be, come in immediately and be a star on this defense. Um, that was probably one of the better picks I've seen the entire draft. Obviously, anytime you can get the top player, it's a great pick. But I think Darius Pruitt was a little bit further down on the list, and I, I think he was kind of an unknown to a lot of people. Um, so, you know, Seahawks definitely saw something they liked in him, and, and they got probably the biggest steal of the draft. The St. Louis Rams are going to get an offseason grade of a C+. Plus. Um, Draco had a, a relatively good offseason. Um, they got a good value pick out of tight end Brad Pugh. Um, he was projected to be the first player off the board in the draft. But I still think this team has a lot of holes. I would really like to see them take a wide receiver um, or an offensive lineman early in the draft. Um, they definitely have an overload at tight end with Pugh. Uh, there's going to be three players fighting to make that top starting lineup spot for the uh, the tight end for the Rams. So it's going to be interesting to see uh, how that plays off. They also signed free agent uh, Brian Arakpo um, and drafted a pretty good rookie left end. So we'll see if uh, those guys can continue and St. Louis Rams get a C plus. The Arizona Cardinals are going to get an offseason grade of a D. Um, I think Playa struggled a lot this offseason. He really didn't make any moves in free agency. Um, I would have definitely liked to see them go after a cornerback, somebody that could play along Patrick Peterson. Um, even if it was one of the veteran guys that was in free agency, I think we had a lot out there, and I think that this team definitely could have attacked free agency a little bit better. They didn't lose a whole lot, and I really do like the roster that, that play is assembled over here. Um, and they found a few good offensive linemen in the draft, so we'll see if, you know, there wasn't a whole lot of improvement, but I don't think this team really took that big of a step back either. Finally, our final draft grade of the offseason goes to the San Francisco 49ers, who are getting a B+. Um, I think this team made a lot of great moves. They signed a lot of veteran talent in free agency. Um, they acquired Greg Olson, Stephen Hauschka, Kareem Jackson. Um, so they made a lot of big moves in free agency, getting a lot of key players that are going to help out this team. They also drafted a really, really good left tackle in Crosby Fisher in the draft. Um, I still think they have a major need at wide receiver. They did draft a rookie wideout, Marquise Burnett. Uh, he can come and contribute, but I think he has a lot of developing to do before he can be considered a star. Um, so I think, you know, this guy's got a big ceiling. Um, and I think the, the 49ers had a really good offseason. And I think it's really going to be dependent on how good rookie wideout Marquise Burnett can be this season. And that's going to determine how good the San Francisco 49ers are this season. That's going to do it for this season's off-season grades. Tune in again at the end of the season when I redo the grades and re-rank everybody's grades based on how you guys play this season. Um, you know, We'll be focusing on how these rookies do, how your new acquisitions do throughout the season, um, and you know, we'll re-grade uh, we'll re everybody and be able to compare next season. 
Also, be sure to head over to uh, be sure to head over to our madambomberleague.com. There's going to be a blog that accompanies this uh, this podcast. So go ahead, read up on the blog. I put a lot of work into this, so I really hope you guys appreciate it. As always, I love to hear feedback from you guys. We'll be back next week with our, uh, you know, we're going to continue getting to know everybody in the league and bounce back to a few of our, our weekly reviews. So, uh, you know, we're going to get back to a little bit of a more familiar format for everybody next week. Um, but as always, TFA Warner signing off. Have a good week, MBL.